Hello. For tonight's grisly tale, I'm going to read you a story from Ghostly Tales for Ghastly Kids. These are cautionary tales that I wrote for lovers of Squeam. Tonight's story is called... Grandmother's Footsteps. I couldn't sleep. There was a man outside my bedroom window. He was a huge man with long black fingernails and wild grey hair. He was trying to get me to let him in, but I wouldn't. He talked to me in a soft, whispering voice about a magic far-off land where trees were made out of breadsticks and the lakes were full of hummus. He said he'd take me there if only I'd open the window, but I wouldn't. He promised me a ride on a flying carpet and a yacht that could sail to the moon if only I'd let him in out of the cold. But I wouldn't. I was too scared. He might have been a ghost. So I lay there for most of the night, just listening to his fingers tapping on the window pane, until finally I plucked up enough courage to speak. <laughs> Grandma! I shouted. And Grandma came running. When I told her that there was a ghost outside my window, she laughed. But I heard it, I said. Listen. We listened to the tapping and she laughed some more. And I've seen it, I added, pointing to the shadow that loomed through my curtain. My Grandma stopped laughing and said, I'm going to tell you a story. Oh, I said, but I didn't let her see how surprised I was in case she changed her mind. This is a ghost story, said Grandma, pulling me up onto her knee. The smell of mothballs was so strong it made me cough. Her bony fingers poked into my ribs as she plumped me up and down like a lumpy cushion. Her cold, dry lips pressed against my cheek. There will be a thin red circle of lipstick there in the morning. I wiped my cheek with the sleeve of my pyjamas and settled down to listen. There was a boy, she said, not much older than you. His name was Jolian, and he lived in a huge, draughty old house by the edge of a lake. Is he the ghost? I asked. No, said my grandmother, not Jolian. His bedroom was right at the top of the house, in a dark, dark room that had once been full to the ceiling with spiders, earwigs and big black beetles. I pulled the shawl off her shoulders and tucked it into my ears. I felt safer when her voice was ever so slightly muffled. Go on, I said. This boy, who looked like me, was in his spooky old bedroom and there was a ghost. Not yet, said Grandma. A ghost behind the door, I squealed. A mad, ranting, blood-sucking ghost waiting to stuff a straw into Jolian's head and suck his brains out like a banana milkshake. No, said Grandma. It's an under-the-bed ghost, then. The ghost hasn't turned up yet. But there will be one. As sure as day turns to night, she assured me. Now, this boy Jolian, my grandmother drew me closer and wound her chicken bone arms tightly across my chest. He was in his bedroom, reading a dusty old book by the light of a small, white, guttering candle. A ghost book, I said. No, said my grandmother. The ghost comes later. Suddenly, the candle spluttered and went out. At first, Jolian could see nothing, but as his eyes adjusted to the moonlight, he could vaguely make out a tall, thin, shadowy figure outside his window. The ghost! I yelled. Not yet, said Grandma. It was then that Jolian heard the scratching. It was there for just a fraction of a second, but it was enough to make him sit bolt upright in bed and hold his breath. He waited to a count of ten. 
He heard nothing more and breathed again. The second time, the scratching was louder. Is it the ghost, Grandma? I asked from underneath her shawl. No, dear, be patient. Just wait and see. Grandma made a funny clicking noise with her teeth and carried on. Julian was underneath the bedclothes in a flash. A ghostly hand was scratching at his window, five bony fingers trying to get into his bedroom. He was as good as dead. His mouth was dry. His shiny white knuckles stood out in the gloom under his blankets. Then the scratching stopped. There was a deadly silence. Julian gasped. He closed his eyes and wished with all his might that his ghostly visitor might go away. He wished and wished and wished and rat-a-tat-tat. Rat-a-tat-tat. It was then that the knocking started. Is it the ghost? I shouted, holding tightly onto Grandma's shawl. It is not, she said, stroking my hair. The ghost comes at the end, but Jolien doesn't know that because he's in the story. All he can hear is the knocking. All he can see is the shadow lurking outside the window. All he can smell is the fear, his fear, fugging up under his bed. <laughs> Grandma took out her left eye and polished it. Well, go on, I said impatiently. Jolien lay in his bed, terrified to move lest this huge beastly skeleton should leap into the room and chop him up with an axe. He lay quite still for hours on end, watching the shadow growing larger and larger, coming closer and closer until suddenly there was a terrible crash of glass as the giant fingers smashed in through the window. Jolien screamed. He felt a cold rush of air as the ghostly shadow sprang across the room towards him. It was then that the door to his bedroom burst open. Oh, this must be the ghost, I yelped. No, said my grandmother. Not long now, though. It was Jolien's grandmother bouncing into his bedroom, wielding a copper bedpan. She had heard his screams for help and had leapt from her bed to protect him. Jolien was curled up under his blankets. Don't let the ghost get me, he sobbed. Don't let the ghost chop me up and eat me. I looked at Grandma, and she looked straight back at me. But you said it wasn't a ghost outside the window. Well, it wasn't, she replied. The tapping was just the wind blowing the branches from an apple tree against the window. Then the wind became a storm, and the branches battered the glass until it smashed. It was Jolien's imagination that created the ghost. I asked her if that was what had happened to me. She said she thought it probably was. Oh, I said, feeling rather small and embarrassed. Then I added, if Jolien's ghost was not a real ghost after all, then you lied to me. Did I? said my grandmother. You said that you were going to tell me a ghost story. And so I did. And you definitely said that the ghost would appear at the end. That's right, said my grandmother. And here I am. She stopped at the door and removed her head to rest her tired shoulders. Then she just disappeared, and I was sure I heard her ghostly footsteps treading a path back into a different world. I didn't sleep for a week after that. <laughs>